Hi, I'm Batsheva Hay. Uh, my brand is called Batsheva. And I am Jamil Mohammed. I'm the founder and creative director of Kyrie. We, I think we met, um, well, first digitally for the, after we both got in, accepted into the fund, we started doing the Zooms together. And then we met at the Pierre Ma show in person. Right, in the rain. In the rain, on the first, the first day, not the everything went fine. Second yeah, yeah, day, yeah. the like actual history making. Were you there when? The torrential. <laughs> torrential downpour. Biblical downpour. Yeah. What was my first impression of you? You were so tall in person. I think that's so obvious. It's too easy of a <laughs> question like, to ask. I'm sorry, you wanted to hear something different, but no, on the little Zoom screen, he was all like, you know, sweet and everything. And then in person, it was like, I think I got like a tap or something. I don't know. Yeah, I got a tap and I was like, it was me, yeah. <laughs> Same one. Being at the Pierre Moss show, seeing you, and just seeing you just like in the mix was, was dope. I was pretty surprised that I got into the fund because I'd already done it before. Yeah. And I think also um, like having had a few more years to to go through things and to learn more. Like when I first did the fund, I was like a much newer brand. And now I'm just, I, I felt like just been through a lot the past few years. So I just didn't have any expectations of, you know, it's been um, a time of like really fighting for bits of success or for any sort of like profit or anything. So it felt like a really unexpected um, surprise. How about you? Yeah, I had, I had been planning to apply for the fund basically since high school, you know? Since season one? Okay. Since literally <laughs> Joseph Altuzara was on the reality show and Jenna Lyons was like the going around to all the different studios to visit all the different designers. Um, for me, it was, it was still surprising, you know? Like I had finished my application like down to the wire, girl, you know, and uh, I was like, hey, if it's meant to be, like, it will be. You know, sometimes you just have to just, like, recognize you don't have the control in the situation. Um, and then, but then for it to, like, turn out, like, you, there's so many things that you do as an entrepreneur that you're just like, well, like, let's see what happens from that, you know? And then for the ideal thing to come from it, it's pretty dope, you know? Right, you can't expect it. Like, it doesn't feel, yeah, that's really what it is. It doesn't feel reasonable to be like, yes, I'm a total lock for this. Like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like, American fashion, your name is me, you know? Um, and so when it actually did come out, I was like, oh shit, like, I'm further along than I thought that I was, you know? Um, so that was dope. But, <laughs> but it was. <laughs> I, I love, like, the, drama of your pieces. I think they're really beautiful and original. I think I can tell that it comes from your vision. Um, I love it. There are so many pieces that I like want, would want, you know, like to see. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, have a studio visit. Um, yeah. And then also meeting you, it like really kind of, you're so, I don't know, you have such great energy about it and so much vision. Uh, and so, yeah, it's really amazing. And I can also feel the sense of like potential in what you're doing, because I can see the little new things and it's just, I can really see that you're on a path and that's exciting, you know? It feels like, not to say you're not fully formed, but you don't want to be fully I'm formed. Not. You don't yeah. want to be fully baked, <laughs> you know? Not, like please. you just, the <laughs> oven's just getting hot, yeah, you know? Hopefully. Like preheat, yeah. Exactly. So you obviously had done the fun before. What do you think like were the ways that it really benefited you? And why did you think to apply again? When I started, I knew like very little. I was really just kind of making a few dresses. And I remember at first, like I was so excited and I felt kind of crushed in a way, but in a way that really helped me grow, which was all the judges were like, you're making one dress, you know, like, and I was so happy with that one dress, yeah. but it's true in the end, it's like they kind of helped me anticipate all these other things, like just having all those, and the judges, the, some of the judges are the same, some of the judges are different, so even just having the voices of those people, you know, who are no longer judges, it's like I've just gotten the benefit of so many 
like industry experts yeah. opinions on my brand that was extra helpful but even now like I know that I can reach out to you know people especially for certain things like you have this account is that a good account yeah. or what do you think about this just it's that is yeah. really the community is super important because there aren't that many people in the world who do what we do, who are in this business that's also creative, that makes clothing for, that, you know, kind of has to like satisfy desires and- Also create them. Content <laughs> and, and creating product and like all of these things and then also deal with this whole commercial aspect and like all of that. So I just think we're in a really unique situation that like can't talk to your friends about, my therapist yeah. can't help me with this yeah. stuff, you know, like you, like, the so advice is very specific. The advice is specific and it's not just like transactional, it really is just support in yeah. things, you know. Um, I think it's really important and also from the judges, you know, they can become, and the mentors that we're getting now, I think um, that's really amazing to have that now, just all the advice and some and you want all the advice I'm just like I have a million questions and I'm soaking up all the answers and I'm getting different answers from different people which yeah. is amazing because there's so much that's changing in the world and in fashion and in whatever mm -hmm. the economy people's <laughs> lives culture all these Ooh. things you know it's like it's all changing yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, question <laughs> is so why did you apply to the fashion fund and what did you want to get out of it and what do you think you got out of it it's a good question um why did i apply i think i you know i had been in programs before you know and in fact like cfga programs before and and learned a lot you know and but it it's at like each you can only learn the lessons that are relevant to the experiences that you're having, you know? Um, and so as you're, as the business has progressed and grown, like I've needed like a new set of mentorship, a new set of advice, you know, at each stage. And the business was growing like last year and, and in, coming into this year at a faster rate than it had ever been growing before. And I knew at the same time that I still needed like some more of those fundamentals that you're talking about, like business infrastructure, like um, a network that's not just about like press and promotions, but that's also about like fulfillment, shipping, customer service, um, and who can give advice that's relevant to the actual position that I'm in now. Um, in terms of what I was like hoping to get out of it, uh, I think it's primarily relationships, you know, like I've gotten specific mentorship for this specific period that I'm in right now, you know, but I also know the real value of this is being able to turn to these same people, you know, in the future and run a future set of questions, you know, once I've tried to implement whatever strategy that I can at this point and taking some learning and some lessons from that, I'm gonna have new questions and new hypotheses to form. Jamil, who is your mentor and what's the best piece of advice that you've gotten from them so far? Um, so my mentor is uh, Pamela Love, and she's really helping us to focus on growing our e-commerce business. Obviously there's a lot of different like component parts, so she's given me like advice about fulfillment center, advice about um, production, advice about a, a lot of the different parts of that. But I think what's been most valuable is getting very specific advice on customer acquisition and like what channels are actually work for that, you know, based on the actual position that I'm in. And I think that what's good about that is she's been a small entrepreneur who is in my category and who's scaled her business to a point of like acquisition, you know? Right. And so she knows like when you have 5,000 followers, like these are the things to do. When you have 10,000 followers and 2,000 email subscribers, like this is what you should do to grow that. And these are the things that are like, this sounds good and it like may produce some results for you, but this is where you're actually going to convert your customers into shoppers, you know, 
this is how you're actually going to um, like speak to them more effectively. And I think it's one thing to get those kind of like general like advice, like you should post more often, you should <laughs> look into ads, you should right, look into right. increasing your newsletter list. But like you get all of those different points of advice and without it having the context of like someone who understands where you are as like a self-funded entrepreneur, <laughs> you know, and uh, can give an advice from that perspective, it's like not that helpful because you can end up kind of just wading through different opinions. But it's good that because she has kind of the bona fides in this like specific experience, I feel like a lot more comfortable trusting her advice and like, right, like trying to build on it. So my mentor is um, Jenna Lyons. And yeah, it's so interesting. It's interesting how, you know, they worked with us to pair us with someone that was going to meet this need. Like for me, um, I feel very like free creatively and I always kind of just enact what I like. I design what I want and, and all of that. Um, but I felt like what I really wanted the help with was um, like how to lay it all out and how to plan it all out and how to merchandise it and like do I need a knit here and whatever and just honestly it's it's like every 10 words that she uses is gonna like make such a business such a business difference for me like such a real difference you know she'll just be like do chambray you know and I'm like <laughs> There's two million dollars of chamber, you know, yeah. but it's just, it's like the kind of thing where I can see these, these little, you know, just these pieces of advice. And I think just, yeah, some of it is so wise because I've always been battling between, I tend to be really like eccentric and quirky and I'm so not a minimalist. Like my, I, I just don't like straight lines and whatever. I want ruffles and prints and whatever. Um, so, I always kind of shun people who are like pare it down, but um, but then she kind of helped me look through what I was actually making, what's selling, what I love, what my customers love, and um, and she gave me this great advice, which was I I told you earlier about it, this idea of like surprise and delight, right? Like you always want to do the things that fuel you creatively, and that are also going to capture people's imagination and desire and like you know, are kind of the fuel and like the, that energy, the vision. Yeah. the vision. But then when it comes down to it, like there are real women, real people who are like looking for something that they want to invest in, that they, you know, want, and they want a piece of that vision, but you know, they're, they're not going to buy the most expensive thing and the craziest thing because they want to wear it multiple times. Yeah. So like how to make something that takes like the essence. the essence but feels also core like feels like a basic for me like what's my basic yeah. you know so i think that was really interesting to be like still do the like surprise and delight surprise and delight you know but like but still you know the the real thing like build that core kind of infrastructure yeah, yeah the foundation yeah love that so in terms of the selection committee, was there anyone you were really excited to meet, surprised to see, or anything like that? Um, I think the person that like, most excited me, from a business standpoint at least, was Aurora James. I think for similar reasons to why I really respond to Pamela Love as a mentor, because I do really respect her just pure entrepreneurial hustle, you know? And I feel like the, even like the insights that we've gotten from her in our like various master classes and stuff have just been so um, pointed, you know, they're like so not theoretical, you know, right. you <laughs> actionable, advice. you know, no, it's true. It's true. I, I love a non theoretical advice moment more than anything. So, and, and obviously like, or maybe not obviously, but her specific, um, background in sourcing in Africa, you know, is really incredible to me and like where I would like the business to grow to, you know. Um, and so I think just seeing the even one part of the infrastructure that allows her to do that, you know, and to really 
um, run a business that is in alignment with like her personal values, you know, that's that's really like huge as an example for me, you know, and I like to glean whatever little insights and apply them as best I can. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Aurora is like an incredible person for the selection committee and just such a, she really is like she's such a can-do person, you know, like I just, I've always, I've known her for a while, but um, I just, I'm always amazed that it's like, she's, she, <laughs> she finds a way, she finds a way. She's yeah. so, like creatively, that kind of point of view perspective. And I love how I forgot what it was when we were on one of those Zooms where she was like, you know, what quantities do I make of this? And she's like, whatever I feel like, you know, and that's a real, answer because yeah. sometimes you don't know you just don't have the data to know if something you love is going to sell so don't but sweat she, it girl yeah don't yeah. sweat it like <laughs> if you love it have the confidence to make it yeah. you know and then you'll so i thought that was really interesting because there's something about um this idea of like the veteran that's going to teach you like the rule for the thing like the rules are changing so much yeah. so and something like making something that is desirable is not something that there's an equation for or like numbers to crunch. So what's one goal you'd like to accomplish for your brand or for your career? I really want to like expand in a way that makes sense, you know, and that uh, takes account of like the actual resources that I have in the business. And I, I think for me, one of the core things I'm focusing on right now is partnerships, um, because I think I want to engage with like the texture of the world, you know, and sort of make my brand about like insisting something, you know, <laughs> in a lot of different spaces, right? And so that could just be like through selling my original designs to Saks or to Bergdorf or whatever, and sort of insisting that this black inspired object that's fully resolved can can and should be regarded as like a luxury object but i also want to like collaborate with like established luxury partners and say like okay so your 100 years of your history has been about frenchness you know <laughs> let's trouble that a little bit who else was in france in 1930 you know right, right. did they come from martinique did they come from guadeloupe did they come from haiti Let's talk about that, you know, with the resources of, you know, a true established luxury player, you know? Okay, so what's a goal that I have for my brand? I think I'm, I, I do, like it's interesting what you were saying about creating the space. Um, I think I do have a real goal of having a space, a store, having that format of yeah. like, because you know, we were saying today that like having your stuff on a rack at some store, it's like, it's a little bit like your baby's like in Just someone chilling. else's. Yeah, like somewhere. So I do think that I love, I, I do have a world in my mind that I'm always designing into. So to actually be able to have, you know, a comfortable world that I can create that like I welcome people into, that's definitely a goal. So I'll ask you the question first. Oh, Hi, Matsheva. <laughs> Who's your style icon and why? Who is my style icon? I don't know. I'm going to be so lame and just say, like, it's like women in my family. I just, I'm not someone who's like, I, you know, it's, it's just, it's not someone famous. I think that I, I really do think that style is an important thing. It's, it's not fashion, it's style. So, I think it's, you know, you have to know a person and the way they move and like all of their kind of, I just, to me, I really feel the way that the women in my life, in my family, the women that I was like, you know, so excited to like touch their dresses when they let me into their closet. My Aunt Pam, who like lived in the East Village and was an actress, she's my style icon. She would like, you know, I'd only see her occasionally and like she had crazy vintage and um, she just was really original and had that style thing which was a way of carrying herself, yeah. um, confidence, a not giving a fuck kind of kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, I, it's, 
I also have a fashion auntie who was like hugely impactful, you know, on my development as like a designer and as an artist and who was always like down to engage with me seriously, you know, and engage with like my ideas seriously and like my opinions, you know, we would look at a Dior show together and I'd be like, oh, I love this look. And she'd be like, well, I like this about this look, but like, uh, it could be better, you know? <laughs> like, here's the part that I don't like about this, you know? And um, I think that my philosophy about style is similar to yours because of the education that I got from her, right? Like, I don't think that there's any style that is just like homogeneously great for every person, you know? Like any garment, any, you know, object, right? It really is about the recognition that like, whatever you're making, you know, or whatever people are buying from you, you know, they're bringing it into their own lives and it will have to like sort of like an individual purpose, right? Not just like the kind of idea of like a fashion item. Um, and that way, like style is, style is like the macro version of all of those individual relationships between like a product and a person, right? It's, it's, um, it's very, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not multilateral, but, um, Heterogeneous, <laughs> like uh, there's a Very lot of general. there's a lot of variety, you know, <laughs> is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, and you know, I I don't really respect the idea that there is like a good style or a bad style. It's like the style that works for this person, you know. And I hope that like the objects that I create can be embraced by like stylish people of a lot of different types of um, backgrounds experiences, lives, you know? That's, that would be like the process by which I'd make myself my own style icon is like, get to interact with as many types of stylish people as possible.